In this video, I'll show you the easiest way to add complex animations to objects using the motion path effect in Camtasia. There's actually a lot you can do and control using motion path, so let's get into it. Everything I'm about to show you can be done with videos, images, uh, or callouts or graphics of any kind. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to demonstrate using callouts. So what I've done here, I've gone ahead and I've created an image here. It's made up of four different elements. We've got a line, we've got a sh little white shape here. We've got a green shape and a red shape. Kind of made a tomato out of <laughs> all of the callouts available in Camtasia. Now what I want to do though is I want to group them all together. So I'm going to highlight all these. I'm going to right click and select group. So now it's one object, okay? And with this object, we can move it around the screen, uh, the canvas, or we can resize it. So let's make this a little bit smaller because I want to demonstrate moving it across the screen, okay? Let's put it over here, let's say. Now, the, the first way, the main way that you're probably all used to how to animate an image from one point to another point on the canvas is to use the animation arrow, the custom animation. So you would do that by going up to animations here and then grabbing a custom animation and dragging it down to the timeline. Okay, and then you would modify one of the points, either the in point or the end point of the arrow. Uh, since we've just added it to the object, both the in and the out properties are the same. So let's go ahead and, and modify the ending properties. So with the playhead at the end of the arrow and the object selected, we come over here to the properties. And right now we're in the group properties where we can change the colors of any of the individual elements in the group. But we want to click on this, sorry, we want to click on this icon right here into the group to modify the properties. So let's just go ahead and click and drag this and move it over here. Okay, and then release that is the same as just modifying the position X and Y coordinates over here. So we've modified it here at the end of the animation. Now let's put our playhead back at the beginning and we'll use the uh, uh, play shortcut, which is the space bar to watch the result. So we just have a quick animation from left to right. And if you noticed, it kind of sped up. So what that was, was the easing was set to ease in and ease out. And the way you can check that is right click the animation arrow anywhere and then under animation easing you, you have several choices here so exponential in and out was selected that's why it, it started slow it sped up and then it's it slowed down at the end but if you want it to be a constant speed right across you would select none okay and now that looks like this just a constant speed from one side to the other now one other thing i want to show you about this is actually there's two more things I want to show you. One thing is uh, I want to demonstrate what this looks like when we stop it mid animation. So we'll start, stop right there. Take a look at this image and how clear it looks. Okay. I want to show you how to make this look a little more realistic. And the way you do that is with the motion blur. So generally when something is moving and if you, if you stop it or freeze frame, you're going to see some blur. Well, with right out of the box, the animation does not give you that result. It's a very clear image. And all you have to do to fix that uh, and to make it look a little more natural is you come up here to visual effects and you scroll down and you want to look for this effect right here, the motion blur. Click and drag that down onto our group. And now you see right off the bat what happens. See, it's, it's blurry now in the middle of the animation. If we drag the playhead to the left before it starts animating, it's clear. And then let's play this and watch it through. Okay, it's blurry in the middle and it's clear at the end. Okay, it added some motion blur. And you can see how much it added. And it added the motion blur in the direction of movement. Okay, so for example, if we took this and moved it down here, okay, so now the animation should be from top to bottom. It, now, this is moving not as fast, but and that's why there's not as much blur, but you can see the blur is in the direction of, of movement, okay? If you really zoom in on this arrow, you can tell the blur is, is up and down. Does that make sense? And you can really exaggerate this if you shorten the distance of the animation, which speeds it up. So now watch this. 
Okay, I stopped that in the middle. Now look how blurry it is. That's the motion blur, okay? Now, again, to make it look a little more natural, you would probably want to use easing. So we'll right click this arrow and we'll turn easing back on, okay? Let's just make this animation a little bit longer. And actually, let's put it back over here. And now let's play this through. Okay, now you can see how much blur there is there and you can tell it's in the direction of motion, okay? That is motion blur and I strongly suggest you use that, especially um, when moving videos around or anything really. Um, it just gives it a more natural look, okay? So that's motion blur. So now let me back up here. I'm just gonna control Z back several times all the way back to the beginning, right here, okay? So here is our object. Now, that was one way to add an animation, um, but there, it's very limited in what you can do. It's a straight line animation. You can modify the speed uh, and you can add easing, which speeds it up and then slows it down, those sorts of things, but it's always in a straight line direction. The way to get around that and to have a little more complex motions is with the motion path. So let me show you what that's all about. It's right here in the visual effects, motion path. It's also an effect, so you would click and you would drag it down to your object like this. And as you can see, it draws a path for you to start with. And let's just see what this looks like. You can see the, uh, the arrow, it looks different. The motion path looks different than, than the regular animation arrow. So let's just watch what this looks like. Okay, so, Basically, it follows this path, okay? And you can modify that path. So there's a couple things you can do. So you can select this here, just the same with the, as with the animation arrow, you can click and drag these to speed up or slow down the animation. So if I make it longer, that slows down the animation, okay? And the other thing is, let's just make it really long. It just really slows it down. Now, if I stop it mid, journey, <laughs> you can see again, it's very clear because, because there's no motion blur. And once again, we can add motion blur the same way as before. Click and drag it down and add it to the object. Now you can see if we, if we expand our effects, we have both motion path and motion blur added. And you can see the motion blur was added like that in the direction that it's moving. Now, let me just show you a couple of different ways you can modify the path. Okay, of course you can click and drag the starting and the end points. Okay, like so. You can, you can generate some pretty cool looking paths, really. Um, now you see this horizontal line that, that appears? It appears at the end here, and if I click in the beginning, it appears there as well. You can click and drag the point at the end to either, to, to modify the path. And you can just kind of play around with it to see what it does, okay? And same with this one. You can click and drag that one and move it around. You can move that up. You can move this down here. So the shorter it is, you know, the quicker it'll turn into the point. And the longer it is, the more sweeping motion it takes before it turns into the point, before it turns into the end point. So again, let's just go ahead and we'll shorten this up so it doesn't take as long and just see what this resulted in. There's our motion path. Some things I want to show you about the motion path, uh, some additional things you can do to edit it. If you look at these line types, these are talking about these lines here that give you the more control over how, how uh, the object comes into the endpoint. If you don't want this control, you can simply click here and that gets rid of it. It just goes straight line right into that endpoint, okay? Does that make sense? It's going to take some, probably some trial and error and some playing around with this to really understand how it works. Um, but let's go ahead and turn that back on. So, so you can't go in and out, which is what this icon is, because this point is at the end. There is no out. There's only an in, in to the end, if that makes sense. Okay. And then, so with that icon selected, that brings us back, it gives us back this, uh, this uh, uh, point here that we can manipulate like this. Okay, same thing with the start. We can highlight this and we see we already have uh, one of these handles that we can move around and that's denoted right here. If we did not want that, we would click this icon here and then it's gone. Let's bring it back and then we can modify it. And again, with this one, we can modify that one. 
Okay, so there's all kinds of different things you can do with there. And with the easing, you can control the speed at which it's it's either leaving the starting point or, or ending into the end point. Okay, so right now we have ease in right here. If we had that set to none for this point, then the way it would look is just a constant speed to the end. Okay, so let's just turn that ease back on. I selected both, but it automatically... Uh, chose ease in because in is the only option here. Okay, so again some more controls here You can have some fun with those and and come up with all kinds of crazy motion paths Okay, now I want to show you something on the timeline if we go down to the timeline Let's take a look at this icon here this icon that denotes the motion path There's some other ways you can modify this so you don't have to just have a start point and an end point Okay, we have those two points now and this point basically is where the playhead is, okay? But what you can do is you can add additional points. And the way you do that is you would right click with your mouse here, right click, and then click on add motion path point at playhead. So we'll click that, and there we go, another point right there. Okay, and now with this point, we can click and we can move that around. And it, it also has these two handles. Now this is where the ease in and ease out both come into play. If we come over here to the line type, see you can have this icon selected, so we have the handles on both sides. And then under easing, we can select ease both instead of ease none. Okay, ease both means it's gonna slow down as it comes into, the, into this point, and then it's gonna start slow and speed up as it leaves, okay? Without any easing, if we change that to none, it's not going to slow down at all when it gets to that point. And you can kind of tell that's why that motion blur is still there. It's going to be going really fast through there. And let's just watch this. Yeah, that really sped up here. I've got this line really long. Let's kind of shorten that up. I mean, you can do all kinds of crazy things. Look at this. So let's just see what that does. Okay. All kinds of crazy stuff you can do. Um, the other thing you can do is on the timeline, you can move these points around. Like I can click and I can drag this. So let's say that from, from here to here happened too slow. If I want that to speed up, I would click this and I would drag it over here to shorten this distance, okay? This end is gonna be slower and this is gonna be faster now. So let's just, you can kind of see that. Okay, and then you can add other points. Um, let's just, uh, let me just stretch this actually, let's just reshape this. So, uh, I've got a little bit more control. We can see a little bit more on the screen. There's one last thing I want to demonstrate with this. Let's just move this back here. We've got a relatively normal path now, I think. Let's just close, let's just, so you can move it around. You can click and slide and move this. You can add more than one other point too. You can add other points. Um, well, you have to put the playhead where you want to add a point. Right click, add motion path point at playhead. So now there's another one up there. Okay. All right, now we got a, a really crazy motion up there that we did. You get the idea. So the last thing I want to show you, and for this we're going to go back into the properties, is the, uh, the direction. So I put an arrow... As you can see, I put an arrow in my graphic, okay? You can just move it up here, you can see. I want you to see how this is oriented as we go through this. So all, all I want to demonstrate is that you can select over here this auto orient button. Let's go ahead and click that, okay? And now when we go through the motions, see, what, see what's happening? The image is actually auto orienting in the direction of motion. Okay, so at any time if you stop this motion and zoom in, you can see the direction of blur because we have the motion blur enabled or added, that effect added to this object is always in the direction that it's moving. Do you want more tips like this? Let me know in the comments below. Or come join me on Tuesdays in my live stream. I live stream every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern here on YouTube, sharing my screen and doing how-to tutorials. I show you how I make my videos and I answer any questions you have live. So if you're looking to level up your videos, join me on Tuesdays. I'm Rob and I'll see you in the next video or in a live stream. I'll see you soon.